Protests that started about a month ago have been spreading across Chile. These protests started because of a rise in metro fares and people being fed up with a rising cost of living as well as more income inequality in the country of Chile. Students are also upset because the cost of education has been going up as well as the quality of education is not good enough. On October 25th, over one million Chileans took to the streets to demand that the president, Piñera, resign from his position. So far, over 20 people have died from this protest, and many people have been arrested. This wave of unrest, this wave of political turmoil, is the largest since 1990 in Chile. This wave of unrest is extremely surprising in Chile because Chile has always been considered to be very stable in Latin America. It's a country where uh, its GDP is really good compared to its neighbors and its level of human development index is also decent. So this shows that despite an economy that has been growing pretty fast, that has been doing really well, people are fed up with the system. They're fed up with cost of living that is rising and with a growth that is not inclusive, that doesn't include everyone. Now, what has the government tried to do to calm down these protests? Well, first of all, the rise in the metro fares has been canceled, but also the government has proposed a stimulus package worth $1.5 billion. In that package is included a rise in the minimum wage, a rise in pensions payment, better health benefits, but also more electricity subsidies. And the government will partly finance this package by increasing taxes on the rich and thus reducing income inequality in Chile. They also are talking about a new constitution in Chile. The president has proposed that the old constitution be removed and in April 2020, citizens will be voting on this referendum. Also, Piñera overhauled his whole cabinet and brought in new ministers, including a new finance minister who will be responsible with answering the protesters' demand and trying to make Chile's economy a little fairer. The economic impacts of these protests are already being felt today in Chile. For example, in terms of the currency, the peso plunged in early November when it hit a record low. And this devaluation of the currency has economists worried because they're worried that prices will rise and this will lead to a lower purchasing power in Chile. The stock market was also impacted by these protests. It fell in October and November. And in terms of property damage, the damages should amount to between two to three billion dollars due to this protest. Economic growth will also be impacted. Now economic growth for Chile was revised down to 2.3% this year and trade has calmed down. Exports and imports have both been reduced due to the protests.